is a pleasure and an honor for me to introduce the next speaker, Jorgen Gren, who is the Director for Resources in the Director General for Translation of the European Commission. We really wanted, we've heard about the market perspective, we've heard about the academic perspective on the future of the language professions. We really thought that the institutional component should be part of the picture. And this uh, is an important one. Um, so I hope, uh, Jürgen, you'll forgive me if I leave something out, but then um, just a brief summary uh, of your curriculum. He's educated in France at the Institut uh, d'Etudes Politiques and, uh, and in BUK at Queen's College and holds an MPhil and a PhD from Cambridge University. Uh, before his current position, he worked as an expert in the cabinet of the vice president responsible for the digital single market strategy. And before that, he served as head of unit in DG Connect for the digital agenda for Europe and the digital single market policy unit. In his current role at DG Translation, he oversees areas such as training, future resources of the DG, e-translation and language technology, knowledge management and data strategy for the DG. So we really couldn't have hoped for a better speaker in today's event, bringing us the perspective of the uh, institutions on the future of the language professions. Again, we are really grateful that you accepted our invitation and that you are with us today. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much also for the introduction <clears throat> and thanks uh, for the invitation. I wanted uh, to congratulate you as well on, on this project and, uh, and the universities and stakeholders who are, are involved in this project for, for tackling such a relevant topic. I mean, this is very close to the different priorities that we have in, in DGT and, uh, and we think that projects like this will also help to equip uh, younger people uh, for a smooth entry into the jobs market later on, as I just heard. Uh, that this is of course important <clears throat> and uh, we all have the the uh, the fantastic opportunity as you were to work with something that that is a is a passion for us and uh, languages are a passion for me as well so even though my background is 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 in in technology and many other things i'm, I'm quite old in the game to be very honest but but uh, i also have a passion for languages and to uh, have a passion for cultures as you heard <clears throat> i lived in several countries i'm swedish uh, originally so this is uh, something which is very close to our priorities in DGT and to to my own uh, priorities and interests as a person now <clears throat> of course upskilling is relevant it always is it always has been uh, but perhaps even more now as uh, AI and related technologies have such an impact on societies in general and our, on our work uh, in particular and on the translation uh, profession in particular um, you know, competencies and skills are also part of the EMT network that you know very well that you are a part of uh, uh, from the start and as well as transversal skills, such as the ones that we discussed before uh, in terms of uh, research and linguistic research, of course. Now, <clears throat> we in DGT, we are very early adopters of IT and of machine translation, uh, of course, of IT processes and workflows as well. Um, actually, the first uh, system that we have on machine translation came out roughly at the same time as the first Star Wars movie came out, so in the mid 70s. Um, uh, we also uh, developed these different tools and, and now we are using, as you know, e-translation, which is uh, of course a neural machine translation type of system. We started this four or five years ago and it's been a, a big success for us, very big success even. Um, Okay, we are not uh, at the level of Google Translate, of course, but, but for, for our levels, uh, we are hitting the 100 million pages mark uh, already now for this year. Last year, we were at, uh, at 75 million. The year before, we were at around 100 million for the whole year. But now we are hitting uh, these 100 million pages uh, already after six, uh, six months. And, we also have, uh, I would say, quite a great success in, in our e translation. We are competing. We are trying to compete in what is called the Olympics of machine translation, uh, which is a WMT um, process uh, and the WMT conferences. And the workshop machine translation, it, it stands for. Uh, and here we usually uh, end up at uh, uh, top five in, in all of the different uh, language combinations. So I think that this is 
very important uh, for us uh, that we have changed. Uh, this change also means that all the people who are translating and who are employed in, in DDT will also have to embrace this change. And we have very good uh, upskill programs internally in DDT to, to help everybody along. I mean, <clears throat> often we have discussions about people who have come in 20 years ago and how the whole profession has changed and how we can help people to, to, uh, to update their skills. And we are doing this on a daily basis. Uh, but often it, it is that you, uh, you work in this institution and you, you don't see the changes as a big bang. Uh, it is actually very incremental. And, uh, and all of a sudden, 10 years later, you wake up and you find yourself uh, in a, a situation which you haven't been in before with a lot of new and different skills, which takes me to this, uh, this uh, discussion that you have had and that you asked me also to intervene on, uh, which is about um, skills and uh, profiles. Uh, I would say for, from the outside, I don't think many people actually understand how tech savvy uh, translators have become. I'm personally extremely impressed by the juggling of, of application, trans, uh, applications that translation professionals are able to do. I mean, there's a big uh, high versatility of skills uh, in terms of, for instance, uh, linguistic expertise, of course, uh, but also, as I said, juggling four or five very complex applications at the same time. So the CAT, language memories, uh, terminology databases, etc. but also, how uh, you are giving input all of the time uh, to machine translation, which has become a very important tool inside DDT, but also a very important tool uh, outside of DDT in ensuring that we actually do have multilingual societies and that we do have uh, from the European side, the possibility to communicate to all our, our, our citizens in their languages. At the end of the day, I would say that DDT is indeed a part of, or perhaps a most important part of the, uh, what do you call it, the, the, the pillar uh, and, the, and the safeguards of multilingualism in the European Union. Uh, and I think that's a very important role that we have. And it's perhaps understated in, in many cases, as understated perhaps as the understanding of how text savvy translators uh, have become. Now, <clears throat> the market here, uh, is, uh, is, is very much growing. And there's one feature in this, shall we say, new environment that, that, is, that is important to, to take into consideration as well. And it is, I would say, data literacy. Data literacy. Um, there is a mass of data out there and you can use it uh, to study, of course, the evolution of languages. You can use it to see what the use of languages are in, in ways in different contexts and what kind of impact one language has on another. This is a data literacy, uh, shall we say, uh, um, skill, competence, that is, is very important in the way in which the market is growing today. I would say that the market uh, is very interesting for language professionals today. There is more demand than ever. I would say there is more need as well for quality than ever. Uh, human translation is not replaceable in this sense. Um, and human translation cannot either reply or answer to all of the demand. If I give uh, just a little hint from, from internally in DGT for the institutional perspective here, we have around two, 2.3 million pages translated per year internally in DGT with the stuff that we have. And as I just mentioned, our machine translation system deals with 100 million pages just in the first six months. So this is the demand. Uh, and there is no way that human translation can actually serve this demand. Therefore, for me, there's a symbiosis, of course, huh, between uh, machine translation uh, and human translation. And maybe there's a, there's a little bit of a, of a 
paradox. I mean, human translation is, of course, at the very basis of machine translation. Without it, you cannot improve machine translation. And I've seen this uh, in, the, in the past and in the discussion that we have again, given the institutional perspective, we are working a lot with different institutions. And uh, at some stage, we have to tell these institutions that, listen, you have to do more human translation. We cannot improve the machine translation system if you do not do more human translation so that we have better data that we can use to improve uh, e-translation. And uh, I'm not entirely sure that this is uh, necessarily a paradox, but it's perhaps a, a little bit of a hidden side uh, that doesn't come out as, as, as much as perhaps it should uh, in these kind of discussions. But as I uh, also uh, hinted from the beginning, the market is changing as well in terms of activity and profiles. Uh, apologies if I take up something that you have already discussed uh, before I came into this, this meeting, but uh, I would just say a few words perhaps on the different uh, um, patterns that we have in DGT, where we are moving today, what kind of profiles that we are uh, looking for and the kind of profiles we are moving into. Uh, computational linguists, for instance, are quite high in demand. This is something that we see also in DGT. We have hired, uh, I think it was five uh, computational linguists in the past two years. Specialist translators in the different domains is also quite high in demand. But then we are moving into other types of profiles internally, such as uh, workflow coordinators, uh, workflow designers, uh, language technology coordinators, uh, terminology specialists, and, and data coordinators, uh, data curators as well is, uh, is also a profile that we are having. And um, looking at this perhaps a little bit more largely, I would say that, that I personally, and I've seen as well in the different conferences that I participated in, that there is a great confidence in the future. This is a, uh, a growth market. It's, uh, as I said before, incredibly uh, high demand. So I think we can have great uh, confidence in the future. Um, just to give you a few examples, I mean, subtitling is, is moving uh, multilingual content authoring, uh, multilingual communication experts, software development, uh, uh, machine translation editors in two ways. Huh? Uh, the post editing type of, of work that, that is, uh, is often required today, often demanded as well from, from client, but also uh, understanding the patterns and how to improve machine translation is uh, in demand. So I would say, um, IT tools, machine translation, workflow tools, they are very much an integral part of, of translation today. And it gives you possibility as well to, to, uh, to have a higher, much higher variety of services and uh, products that can be offered there. And also, uh, I know that, that most clients, and I've heard this from, from private translators, freelance translators, uh, it, it's, it's usually the case. I, everybody wants to have, as the French say, l'argent du beurre, soleil de la canière, and all of these uh, kind of things. Uh, but, but they want it fast and they want it cheap. I mean, this is basically uh, the, the situation that they want. But you can, with all of these, shall we say, new possibilities and new tools, etc., have shorter lead times as a part of this uh, evolution and actually uh, try to correspond to this, this new type of demand, which is, which is uh, coming with uh, uh, quality. Of course, quality has to be paid for. This is, uh, this is very clear. Uh, and human translation also has to be paid for. And this is the highest, this is the gold standard. There is for me, no replacement uh, for, uh, for, for human translation uh, of machine translation in this sense. So I would say that I, just to, to conclude, um, I have a very great confidence in the future for, for the translation profession. It's, it's a very exciting profession and it's very high added value. Uh, I think this is important to say as well, with a lot of crossbreeding from different domains in academia, but also from, from the outside. But I would say this as well. It is important 
to understand that um, we need to embrace this change, not submit to it, okay? I come from a past where what was presented on my, of my, my profile in the beginning. Um, I was uh, working for DigiConnect as the head of unit for the digital single market or the digital agenda unit. And then I piloted the digital single market project at the level of the commission for the vice president, Andrew Sunset. And what I saw there is, is very clear. And it's the same experience I would like to bring to this discussion is that if we do not embrace the digital change, it will run away from us. We need to be on the digital change train. Uh, and this is very important. We embrace it, then we can use it uh, to its fullest advantage. If we don't, uh, the train would have a tendency to, to, to run away uh, from us, unfortunately. So then we have to submit to it. And this is not the best of situations. So let's try to embrace this as far as possible. And I know that most of you are already doing it and that most of my uh, people in the uh, DDT are doing it very much. They today cannot live without the different workflow and IT tools to, to reply to this demand that we have. So again, that will be my final message. Great confidence in the future and embracing change. Thank you. Uh, happy to take questions if there's time for this. Huh? Yeah, we, we have five minutes for this. So yeah, if there are questions from the audience, you can write them in the chat. And... Do you mind reading them out to me then perhaps? Uh, because, uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so the, there's um, one which is um, more of a comment. Uh, I keep thinking how critical thinking is crucial for all these task jobs, yet it wasn't mentioned as a required skill. Well, I mean, critical thinking, uh, yes. I mean, this is, it's, it's important for all jobs, all modern jobs. This is, uh, there's nothing different uh, from a translator job to, uh, to, to, to any other job today. Uh? Uh, all modern jobs uh, require this because it's, it is a part of, uh, critical thinking is a part of, shall we say, the, the uh, encompassing other concepts such as uh, creativity and problem solving, of course. And this is the only way to have that. Huh? So yes, definitely, yes. Yeah, and, and in fact, it was also part of the results of our needs analysis. Your talk was so reassuring in many different ways for us as upskilled team in the sense that you confirmed what we really found in our needs analysis, looking at what companies want. And from your perspective, so from an institutional perspective, you, you, you told us exactly what we also observed in, in companies, but it was also uh, reassuring, um, I guess, for, for the audience. The, this I have several quotes from your from your speech, like human, we cannot improve machine translation without human translation. Human translation can be replaced, which is really an encouraging message for people yes. who are thinking. There, there are many students among us, and this is really an encouragement to just think about, uh, think uh, that there's still a need for humans, but we need to embrace change. Of course, but there's there's no way to to replace human translation, and and also there's no way. I said this. This is a double thing. Huh? You cannot replace human translation for the for the gold standard quality, and at the same time, human translation cannot reply to all of the demand which is out there. And so, this is the the, the symbiosis uh, that I'm I'm talking about. And uh, so, so let's use these technologies to its full extent for our purposes. I mean, that's the uh, uh, kind of embracing that I was talking about. Any other questions? So sometimes post editing takes longer. Uh, translation, yes, is based traced. Yeah, well, price fixing from the yeah. EU level is uh, is a tricky uh, is a tricky issue. I mean, this is uh, something that uh, most people would be very much against. Um, so uh, I understand the question, but uh, the, the the solution is uh, is uh, is a little bit tricky. Yeah, and there's also a comment from, from Silvia Bernardini. The industry survey shows that professionals are less worried than they used to be about machine translation. It's becoming another productivity tool like cat tools. Yes. So, so is this what you also observe in your... Uh... Indeed. I completely observe this. I think that the, uh, the, the acceptance of machine translation as a, as a tool for translators is, is there, not as a, as a replacement of translators. Yeah. Uh, this is a very different thing. 
and, and I totally agree with what you said that translators are becoming more tech savvy, but they also are more open to, to technologies. So it's not just about competencies and skills and what you can do, but also what you are accepted to learn to do, mm -hmm. which is maybe something that newer generations are more open to do than uh, the previous ones. I'm, I'm not sure, maybe. I don't know. I'm part of the previous one, but you know, still open. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're a good example. I okay. don't know about that. Other, uh, other comments? Okay. No, okay, I'll read the last one maybe and then let you go. We know your agenda is very packed. Um, <laughs> even if there is the perception that technology companies are looking for um, computer engineers more than linguists, it seems that they actually prefer linguists with some technical know-how. Yes, uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yes, I mean, completely. Completely so agree with that, uh, with that comment, yes. Um, okay. So there are there are compliments on your on your talk. Yeah, I guess thanks. we can <laughs> ma many of them. I guess we that's can, a good conclusion. Then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess we can wrap this up and thank you again for for your time. And then thank you for the invitation. Really thanks. happy to be here. Yeah, thanks. Take again. care and best of luck for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye.